I've been thinking more and more nowadays about how I can generate more income and not take on more risk. Now, a lot of people, they will go and they'll invest into maybe sin stocks like tobacco companies, and you can get a seven to eight, nine percent starting dividend yield, but you got to take on the single stock risk. And I've been thinking a lot about, okay, if I want more yield, I want more income, what kind of options do I have? And I'm a huge fan of covered call ETFs like Jeppy and JepQ. I think those are the best ways that you can reach for yield without taking on too much risk, especially single stock risk. And so if you want more yield, I guess you could you know, screen for companies that have a higher starting yield, but you always run the risk of, well, is this gonna be a yield trap? They gonna cut their dividend? I mean, we've seen that time and time again these last couple of years where companies companies where they, they have a high yield because their share price goes down and lo and behold, they end up cutting or suspending their dividend. And that's just bad news. That's not what you want. And so I've been thinking, well, what other options are there that I've not really taken a look at? And one of them is the ETF put W. So P-U-T-W. This is kind of similar to Jeppy and JepQ, but instead of selling cover calls, they write cash, you know, kind of a cash secured put type of strategy. And so instead of doing it yourself, you can buy an ETF that does it for you, talking about the cash secured puts. So I came across this article here on Seeking Alpha from the, the Gaming Dividend, interesting name there. I've, I've actually reviewed an article from him before that I thought was pretty good. So I saw the article here that he wrote and um, it's titled, Put W, a good income complement to a diverse portfolio. So I thought he did a pretty good job at explaining the basics around this ETF and the strategy of the fund. And I wanted to share the article with you. So because I was actually, I specifically searched for this ETF and I wanted to see if there was an article out there and the article was pretty good. And so I want to, I read it already and I took some notes and I want to share some of my thoughts with you on, on this ETF. So he starts off the summary of the article with wisdom tree put right strategy ETF ticker P U. TW offers a high dividend yield of 10.3% and a history of capital appreciation, making it a valuable addition to income focused portfolios. The fund employs an at the money put option strategy on SPY, so the S&P 500, and then invests the proceeds in US Treasury bills. Put W thrives in volatile markets, providing income during uncertainty, such as upcoming U.S. elections and potential Fed interest rate cuts. Put W offers high income, but a capped upside due to the option strategy and no downside protection in bear markets. There's recently been a growth in the amount of high yielding option focused ETFs being launched to quench income investors thirst for higher yields. Wisdom Tree Put Right Strategy Fund ETF Put W has a longer history with an inception dating back to early 2016 and expense ratio of 0.44%. Put W sports a high dividend yield of over 10% and can serve as a nice addition to an income focused portfolio. Put W is a bit of a rate fund that has a a high dividend yield while simultaneously delivering long-term shareholders with a reasonable amount of capital appreciation. This is impressive considering that these type of funds usually decay in price over long periods of time. That is absolutely true. The NAV erosion has been really, really bad with these cover call ETFs. And we're going to kind of put this into a kind of a, a cover call ETF category. A lot of these ETFs that you hear about here on YouTube, a lot of them I, I don't really trust because the NAV has eroded over time. So you really want to be careful what you invest in because they're not all created equal. This steady performance is what separates Put W from other high yielding option based peers. Looking at Put W since inception, the price has increased by over 31%. When including distributions, the total return sits even higher at 87.5%. Despite the ETF having a, an ETF at the end of its name, the, this fund doesn't operate as a traditional in a traditional manner and holds no underlying equities. So that's really important. This is very different from JEPQ, where JEPQ actually holds the, the companies in the index. This ETF doesn't do that. So that's a fundamental difference here. 
And therefore, a position in this ETF has very specific use cases that may not fit everyone's needs. In my opinion, this ETF can be effectively used as a smaller position when accompanied with a diverse portfolio of other individual equities or traditional growth-oriented funds. I really like how he mentions this in this article, that the, the idea to strategically hold this in your portfolio is to not overweight it as a core portfolio, but as a satellite position, if you're reaching for yield and you don't want to take on single stock risk, this could be an interesting way to get more yield to your portfolio with and also diversify your portfolio because it's focusing on different parts of the market, right? Because it's focusing more on the volatility of the market, I guess you could say. And I, I kind of like that idea of having this as a satellite position if you are looking for more yield. Funds like this also serve as a way to find value in a market that has seen elevated levels of volatility and uncertainty with the U.S. Potential election, presidential election coming up. And so I'm recording this on November, November 6th. So the election's over. And ironically, um, <laughs> the, the volatility that we were promised with the election didn't come. If you saw the VIX, the VIX was down like 20% or something. So uh, that, that promised volatility is just... Another another example of you just never know what's going to happen, um, but uh, but anyway. So with with U.S. president with the uh, U.S. presidential elections coming up, which are now gone past, I expect there to be higher levels of market volatility as investors await the outcome. Well, we already know the outcome. Uh, additional, this article was written about a week or so ago. Additionally, we still have some uncertainty around whether or not the Fed will continue to slash interest rates. This ETF can be a strategic strategic place to park money in the meantime until market conditions start to improve equities rely on bullish market momentum to grow value over time so when market when the market starts to become weaker a fund like this is a great way to still capture value in a sideways moving market okay so i like what he says the one thing that i don't really agree with that i don't really like is how you know he's focused so much on the short term like you could park your money like where it's temporary I, I don't really like that way of investing. Now, this is just personal preference. If you follow the channel, you, you know that when you're investing in a dividend strategy, your greatest asset is time and let your let your assets compound, right? If you're touching the bar of soap, like Warren Buffett famously says, that the bar of soap is gonna get smaller, right? The more you fiddle with it, the more you play with your soap, the smaller it gets, right? The more you play with your portfolio, the smaller it's gonna get. And so I don't really like that piece of what he's saying here. That's more of a, a trader mindset. And I, by no means, if you're a trader, don't invest into this ETF, okay? This is not an ETF that you're gonna buy in and out of out of. So I think the the author of this article is is right in terms of his thinking, but you have to also understand that this isn't a fund that you trade, you time the market with. Okay. At least in my opinion, that's just how I see it. But I I, I could be the odd one out. I don't know, but that's just how I see it. So the strategy of this fund, it is to generate the necessary income by selling at the money put options against the S&P 500 with varying expiration dates. According to the most recent fund document, the proceeds from these sales are then invested into U.S. Treasury bills, as we can see from the uh, from the ETF's overview, the underlying investment are in the U.S. Treasury bills at the moment. Therefore, this ETF doesn't actually have any exposure to the underlying equities. So this is very different than what you're going to get with with Jeppy and JepQ, right? Where they actually own the equities. And if you were to do a cash secured put, right? You don't own the investments until you're assigned the investments. Okay? The 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 companies, the shares, right? So when you write a cash secured put, you, your brokerage, will, you, you don't want to sell naked one, right? You're going to hold the capital in your brokerage until you're assigned, okay? And so I guess that's, there's no different than if you were to do it in your regular brokerage. At least that's how I understand it. Uh, I could be wrong, but that's, you know, from what I've, the research that I've done and my understanding of it, that's that's how it works. So, and I, I mean, I, I write and sell cash secure puts as well, right? So I, I do that um, on, I don't really talk a lot about it because it's more of kind of like a side thing that I do, but I'll talk about it more in the future, I actually think. But I do write cash secure puts in a different brokerage than M1, and I, I generate a good amount of, of money every single month, right? And I, I live off the, the income from that strategy. 
And so I've shared a few videos on cash secure puts on the channel, and I'm, I'm going to talk more about it in the future, I think, because without the cash secure puts, I, I wouldn't be able to retire early. And so they can be very beneficial. They can be very impactful if you do it right. Okay. So like anything, just make sure you, you read up on what you're doing. Anyways, so moving on. Despite the fund following an at-the-money option strategy, this ETF has still been able to capture some upside price growth. This is because the options are written at a strike price that is on the higher end of the at-the-money exercise price, aiming for a modest premium of 2.5%. This allows for a bit of upside growth to happen over time compared to some other cover call funds that set a, strike price, uh, a tighter strike price. This ETF writes these options twice a month in an effort to capture a higher premium. So this is great. This is where the NAV erosion comes in should you know it's all about the potential right it comes down to the potential and so you're able to capture a little bit of capital appreciation which i do like and that is why i like jeppy and jepq because they write out of the money versus other cover call etfs like qyld right where they write at the money okay and if you don't know understand the options and how they work with at the money out of the money this is going to be a pretty much all of it's going to go over your head. So I would probably do a little bit more research if you're interested in this kind of stuff. A lot of people, when they fear what they don't understand, and a lot of people, they, they get intimidated by these option strategies. They're not very difficult to understand once you've taken the time to really look at them. It's the way that I can best explain options and selling options for income, right? Not buying the options and speculating, but focusing on options for income. The way that I look at it is, the way that I would explain it is once you take the time to finally research it, you're going to have a light bulb. And once you get the light bulb, you're like, ah, I get it. I get it. And it might take you a little bit to have that light bulb moment. But once you have the light bulb moment when it comes to options for income, it's like, oh, that's what it is. And then it's like your your mind just gets opened up to an entirely different world. So, but yeah, that's that, at least that was my experience. Moving on, the fund's formal objective is to provide total returns that are similar to the performance of the Evolos US large cap target 2.5% put right index. By now, it should be understood that this sort of fund should, should be utilized by the investor that wants to add a high level of income to their portfolio. So nobody that's in their 20s that has a, a long-term time horizon, okay? This is if you have a short-term time horizon. The strategies used here by the by this ETF does limit the level, level of growth expected, but ultimately enables a way for investors to capitalize on periods of higher market volatility by turning that volatility into more income. As implied, volatility increases, so does the premium received on these options, and this can be a great way to offset mediocre performance when the market is experiencing times of uncertainty. This is also very similar to JEPI and JEPQ, higher volatility, more premiums, more income for you. Performance comparison, so it would be unrealistic to expect this ETF's total return to keep up with the S&P 500 because of the cap nature of the option strategy. However, this ETF's performance is still a bit impressive. When looking at the total return over the last three years, we can see that there, are, there were periods when this ETF was actually outperforming the S&P 500. Coincidentally, this was when the Fed started to aggressively hike interest rates and caused the market to, uh, to retract a bit from the prior high. This ETF would have been a solid way to offset this price decline in the market as it provided income that could be funneled into other areas of your portfolio. Okay, yeah. And I mean, that's what I like about this. What he's talking about here is to diversify your portfolio. This is a small percentage of your portfolio. And, you know, the market works in cycles. One year, one part of the market is going to be up one year, the other part's going to be up and vice versa. So that's why diversification can be so powerful is you just don't know what's going to do well at any given time. However, there are a ton of cover call funds that operate in a similar manner to this ETF. So a comparison may be fitting, although their strategies may be different. And these funds may have also have different methodologies when it comes to the underlying equity exposure. These cover call funds all implement an option strategy as a way to generate income 
for shareholders. For instance, some of my current favorite funds are the uh, are FEPI, FEPI, the uh, JEPI, uh, and then the NEOS SPYI. We can see that on a, on a year-to-date basis, this ETF holds its own weight against the pack and outperforms FEPI and JEPI in total in the total return. Okay, so the performance has all been fairly similar, so not not too shabby. In terms of a, a price movement, this ETF falls down uh, on one spot in the list, but still provides a positive return on a year-to-date basis. The add-the-money option strategy has, impre- has impressively been able to capture a modest upside price growth. By using this ETF as an accompanying fund, you are able to get the best of both worlds by capturing growth during strong bull markets and collecting higher income when markets are a bit flat. Okay, great. The U.S. elections are still upcoming. Well, we, the the election actually just just took place. So, um, so what he's talking about here is he's talking about the uncertainty, right? When there's uncertainty in the market, the VIX goes up, volatility goes up, and there is money to be made off of volatility, right? And when you're writing puts or, or selling options, it's all based off of volatility. There's volatility in the market people are going to pay more for that volatility. And so, and when the market is not volatile, when there's no volatility, well, you would then assume lower premiums. And so that's in a nutshell, how those, how these ETFs work, okay? It's all all based off of the volatility and also how they're set up if they do it at the money versus out of the money. So the dividend itself, so the main appeal of the cover call fund like this is the high yield and monthly distribution. As the most recently declared monthly distribution of 33 cents per share, the current yield sits at 10%. This monthly frequency can be a gr- can be great for retired investments that may depend on the supplemental income generated from their portfolio to fund their lifestyle expenses. Despite the dividend remaining a- in a consistent range, recently the payouts on a month-to-month basis may vary based on the underlying performance and success of the option strategy. Yes, that is absolutely correct. So however, investors should be aware that portions of the distribution are comprised of net investment income. So this would be kind of like your your W-2 income, your ordinary income. According to the latest Section 19A notice, the distribution has uh, consisted of a majority of net investment income on a fiscal year uh, year to date basis. This means that the distribution may have less favorable tax consequences and will likely be considered an ordinary dividend, which investors should take into consideration. Therefore, an investment in this ETF may be better utilized in a tax advantaged account based on your personal situation. Something that he doesn't mention, but he shows in the graph here that about almost half, like 46% is, if, am, I, am I looking at this right? Return of capital uh, for the year, year to date. Year to date, 46% of the, the distribution has been return of capital. So they're actually returning capital to you. And so uh, for every dollar that you receive, 46 cents year to date has been returning returned back to you so you're not paying taxes on that until you sell it and you're not you're not having any ta- tax consequences until you sell it but the ordinary income 54%. So I I don't really like this as much when it comes to how is the tax treatment because this is the only thing that I'm kind of hesitant with this ETF is I want to be because I would have this in a taxable account I don't want to guess year over year how much I'm going to pay in taxes. And so not having the more of a consistent type of income so that I can plan around it, I personally am not the biggest fan when it comes to that. And it just depends on your situation. But me personally, that gives me a little bit of pause. I'd rather stick with a JEPI or a JEPQ where the income categorized, you know, how it's categorized is a little bit more consistent. But I may change my mind, but that's just kind of on the surface. When I see that, I'm just like, oh, man, really? But, uh, you know, that that it is what it is. And you may have a different opinion, but that's just how I see it. 
So the vulnerability, the issue with these high yielding option funds is that the strategy implemented caps the upside price potential. Despite the success of the at the money option strategy, this ETF can leave money on the table during bull markets. At the money option strategies leave a lot to be desired when it comes to price growth. And this is why I typically favor option funds that lean towards an out of the money approach. Out of the money option strategies typically select a strike price that is much further out from the underlying equity, which allows for a greater for greater upside percentage to be captured during bull markets. Very, very important. That is why if you, allow, you have a long-term time horizon, you don't invest into cover call ETFs, right? You've heard me say that a million times. That is that is why. Despite the option strategy used, all of these type of funds share one vulnerability and this ETF is no exception. This ETF essentially exposes investors to a limited upside potential by delivering capped upside growth while simultaneously having no downside protection during bear markets. So you're receiving only a portion of the good, but all of the bad here. In all fairness, perhaps the income received from, from this ETF can serve as the downside protection, but from a stri strictly price perspective, the option strategy here doesn't limit the downward price swing that can be experienced. Now, I wouldn't put so much weight into this because if you invest into an individual stock, yes, you get all of the upside if it goes, but you, know, you don't have downside protection either. And I wouldn't too, put too much focus on downside protection. I saw that with Nusi a couple of years ago, really, really disappointed in Nusi. It did not perform as it was described or, or marketed by the fund. And so downside protection, I don't really, I don't, I, I used to look at that and think, oh, that's a, a huge benefit. No, no, it's not a big, huge benefit. Take a look at Nusi and, you, and you'll see what I'm, what I mean there. If the markets get plunged into a strong bear market, this ETF may be more heavily impacted from, from a price perspective. If this ETF is used as a, as a complement to an already diverse portfolio rather than a standalone fund, then you can, have, can soften the impact of this downside. A position in this ETF means that you are making the trade-off between total return in exchange for current high yielding income. So in conclusion, this ETF is a unique fund that benefits investors seeking an income complement to complement their existing portfolio. The current dividend yield sits at 10% and distributions are paid out on a monthly basis. Although dividend payments on a month to month basis may vary based on the fund's performance, this ETF is a solid way to generate high yielding income for your portfolio. This ETF's performance holds strong against some relevant cover call peers, such as FEPI, JEPI, <laughs> SP, they all like their eyes, E's, as well. A part of this ETF's utility is to capitalize on market conditions of higher volatility and uncertainty levels. This makes this ETF an interesting choice as it may benefit from the higher volatility driven by the, the uh, US presidential, uh, presidential election, as well as from changing economic data, such as rising unemployment rates. So that's the article. There are no comments on this article. I would give this article a B. I think he does a really good job at explaining who should consider an ETF like this. This is very clearly an in income focused ETF. This is not something that you invest in if you have a long-term time horizon. If you're nearing retirement, you could start slowly investing into an ETF like this or a JEPQ or a JEPI, right? Income and options ETF like this, where you're gonna have a little bit of a higher expense ratio. You're gonna sacrifice a little bit or four go a little bit of the upside potential for a higher income, higher yield. So it's. I think he does a great job explaining who this ETF would be good for, who you know should not consider this ETF. I think he does a good job at explaining the fund methodology itself. He does take the time and understand what index they're, they're tracking and how it works. He does do a good job at talking about how the dividend is taxed. A lot of these articles, they don't go into the nitty gritty of the taxes, the fund methodology. They kind of just brush over those. So I, I give... Uh, uh, my, you know, I, I do really like that he talks about that. One of the things that I was not the biggest fan of, and this is more of a personal preference, I was talking about this earlier, is I wouldn't look at this ETF as like a trade. This isn't something that I trade the market with. I wouldn't look to buy this because of an election, because of interest rates, because of unemployment. Like, if you're going to invest into this, it's because you you've reached retirement age, you've reached the time where you're no longer working, you're transitioning from wealth accumulation phase of life into wealth preservation, okay? And so 
I would not recommend looking at this to trade in and time the market, okay? And this is a clear example. He wrote this article in the beginning of October saying, hey, we got the election coming up. There's gonna be a lot of volatility. Bam, the market's up like 3% after the election. So it just goes to show when you think there's gonna be volatility, the market just humbles you and gives you the complete opposite, right? Throws you a big curveball. So that's why I don't like trading in and out of these kind of ETFs. I think you're much better off focusing on time in the market versus timing the market. I guess the last thing that I would have liked to see in an article like this, one of the big advantages of this ETF is that it's been around since 2016. So you could have seen how it performed 2018, 2020, 2022, you know, and you could see really, you could dive in and spend the majority of your time not thinking about a theoretical future event like the election or unemployment or interest rates. You could actually go back and time and look at how it's actually performed and base an analysis and a thesis off of that. So I much would have preferred a backwards look approach at how this ETF performed versus a hypothetical future event, right? And so, but yeah, all in all, I thought the article was pretty good. I understand the ETF a little bit more. I would definitely recommend if you're interested in, in an ETF like this, that you do a little bit more research. Don't just watch this video and then you know, go and invest into it. This should serve as a way to go and look more, a little bit deeper and see if this is a good ETF for you. Me personally, I would definitely consider it. I think um, if I, you know, I probably would prefer this over owning, you know, individual tobacco companies. Though the reason why I still have tobacco stocks in my portfolio is primarily for the qualified dividend, right? BTI, Altria, Altria Group, and Philip Morris, I'm getting that qualified dividend, right? And that's that's why I still hold on to them. I don't want to hold on to tobacco companies forever. Once I get to a point where I don't need to, you know, squeeze as much juice out of the lemon out of my portfolio. I would then look to de-risk and a way that I would look to de-risk is more into stuff like this. I think this would be a much better sleep well at night than single stock exposure. But that's just my personal opinion, how I view it. But yeah, I hope that the video was helpful. I hope that you learned something new and I'll see everybody in next week's video. Thanks for watching.